Very important day for Volkswagen Group here in India as Benhard Meyer is here to discuss not just what sort of announcements lie forward for investments and product, but also the overall plan for both Skoda and VW to address what's obviously a very significant market here in India. Great to see you. And, and you kept your promise of, of seeing me in India next time. So I'm, I'm very pleased to have you here. Welcome. Um, and thank you for your time. I have to start with obviously the, the main reason that brings you here. Uh, there was an announcement obviously before your trip mm -hmm. about how there is going to be a new plan. Skoda is going to sort of be at the front of that plan. Take us through it, please. Well, we are talking about India 2.0. Uh, this is an uh, initiative which uh, the group started one and a half years ago. Uh, when we discussed how to tackle the Indian market best and the group decided to hand over the responsibility to the branch Koda to develop the Indian market for the future and we decided to do it uh, with a two brand strategy so with our uh, sister, mother, brother brand Volkswagen we are now starting off to new frontiers um, we see India as uh, being one of the most important markets in the future uh, when we talk about growth potential. This market last year sold uh, uh, 3.2 million cars roughly around that and is supposed to be the third biggest market in the years to come selling then more than five to six million cars a year and of course we want to take advantage out of these potentials. Uh, how much of that do you want to take advantage of in, in terms of you know putting some sort of a target for share? Yeah, first of all, we took a strategic market share for both brands together with 5%, uh, let's say in the midst of the next decade. But this is not something which is casted in stone. Uh, it, 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 it all depends on the market development itself. And um, we are also not only driven by volume. Uh, we are aiming for a sustainable growth path. And uh, I think this is uh, the most uh, crucial item from an entrepreneur's point of view. Sure. As a, as a group, you have invested significantly already in the country. Um, there is significant capacity here already, but I understand a lot of that would need to be upgraded to bring in some of the new platforms and the new technology uh, that you're operating with globally. Uh, future investments or more immediate investments? Yeah, the, the authorities, as you know, decided to change the requirements for the uh, individual mobility and for uh, car manufacturers uh, tremendously, coming up with part stage six, uh, starting from 2020 onwards and uh, this is something which really will change the level of uh, competition here in that market as well. And our platform MQBA0 is already ready for that. It's already coping with all these requirements and is probably the most intelligent platform which is available on, the, on a worldwide scale. And on this platform we are now um, developing cars built in India, developed in India for our Indian customers. Why is that part so crucial? Because like you said, you already have all of this ready in many ways. There are already products, of course, based on this in other markets. Um, would it have been, um, I mean, that could have been one option to simply bring some of those products here. So are you going to have a mix of global and local products? What's yeah, the plan? Yeah, we do have already um, um, passing component business uh, based in Aurangabad, where we are building our uh, current model lineup. Uh, with the uh, core of the brand, the Octavia, with our flagship, the Superb, with the Rapid, a very important car here in India, and of course the new, we all new Kodiak. And uh, there are more cars to come in the future. Uh, this is also part of our strategy now. And um, well, why now the MQB A0? One reason is uh, the requirements, are the requirements. And uh, the other one is that this platform is multifunctional. So we are starting now, firstly, with a mid-size SUV, very competitive. But uh, we did not rule out uh, a hatchback, we do not rule out anything what is really competitive. Uh, but um, we have uh, to now start with a very strong offer and this will be a mid-size SUV. But it doesn't rule out some of the global existing products. You could no, still bring those as well. We will, we will not rule out anything. Because they yes. share a platform yeah, anyway. Exactly. And um, what part of this would be um, shared in the sense that would there be an equal product offering uh, segment wise or, or number of products wise between Skoda and VW? How will that part work? Well, this is uh, something which we are um, 
doing in these days uh, on a worldwide scale with all the platforms. The platform is open for all parts of, uh, of the group, for all brands of the group. And um, we do have um, our Skoda products on that platform and Volkswagen does have the Skoda, uh, the, the Volkswagen cars on that platform and that works out really perfectly. This is a huge advantage in the, in the competition. And, and so that's how it will be here as well, you'll have exactly. both brands. Um, does that affect in any way uh, investments also towards network? Because yes, both brands now have a significant network in India. But if you're looking at you know a bigger aspiration in terms of share, would you look at also significantly ramping up the network? Yeah, we have to. We have to. We are currently a very small uh, manufacturer when we speak about volume. Last year we sold roughly uh, 17,000 vehicles uh, a year, uh, but only with uh, parts and components business. So uh, not with all the tax advantages you can gain if you produce in India itself completely with a very high level of localization. And this is exactly our approach. We will localize roughly 90% of all components and parts for our new products here in India. And this is why we are setting up a new project house for research and development, which is by the way currently under construction already in, in Pune, and we are going to hire people for that already now. Uh, and so we will develop this car with Indian engineers, with Indian workers it will be built, with Indian suppliers which will make the parts and components for our Indian customers. And I think this is the best approach here in this very competitive and price sensitive market. Now I understand that you would look at significant volume here in the domestic space from this product for both brands put yeah. together. But uh, when you talk about developing a product like that, given that you're using you know, your global platform with, with the global expertise and technology that you already have at hand, do you see potential for this product in other markets too? Yeah, we do. Um, Volkswagen already today is exporting a severe number of cars yeah. from India, let's say to Mexico and some other markets as well. And we are looking at um, markets which uh, um, are reachable from, from India, that means probably markets in the Middle East area as well as South America and other markets if it is feasible and from an uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneur point of view also profitable, then uh, we are ready to do so. Now, but first of all, we are focusing on the Indian market itself. Fair enough. The reason I ask that is because even though I know you said volumes may not be the driving factor behind a lot of your decisions, volumes would be nice. And so uh, exports could be sort of a fillip to those volumes from day one or would it only come later? Well, this depends on the development of the worldwide uh, markets uh, in, the, in the months to come. As you see, there's a lot of rumors and discussions about uh, tax barriers all around the globe. So. I hope that this will come, calm down a little bit uh, and uh, if uh, the requirements are positive, why shouldn't we start right away when the production is available? Alright, now that instantly brings me to a point about the product itself, but before that, one quick point about the exports or the potential for exports. Um, we haven't really seen the Škoda brand doing much in terms of exports, it's always been VW out of India, like you said, Mexico being a, a good example of that. But Parallelly, there's also been an announcement from Škoda's side to go into new markets, to expand volume in a big way. Does this plan play into some of that role as well? Because, you know, we haven't really seen, like I said, Škoda exporting big numbers from India in the past. Yeah, this is one of uh, the uh, parts we are uh, aiming for. This all comes down to our strategy 2025, which we released roughly two years ago. Um, when we said we are at home, at that time in 102 markets and yeah. we are aiming to uh, discover some new markets um, saying around 120 markets by 2025 and um, this year already we are entering uh, uh, Singapore next year South Africa is on the plan and there are a couple of markets which will come afterwards and uh, of course all our um, production network, network has to has to contribute in that uh, aspect and we will uh, utilize everything what is possible because currently on a worldwide perspective our demand is by far bigger than our supply so we are aiming for capacities yeah and we've, we've seen that pressure for a while and in fact south africa is one of the reasons i asked you that question because mm -hmm. there is a lot of parallels between that market and ours exactly. product wise uh, onto the product, you know, there has been, of course, so much said about diesel and, and diesel gate. 
India hasn't really, let's say, been very active on that front in terms of having a perception hit. I think you've, you've escaped some of that here. But um, having said that, what is your assessment of where diesel goes from here? Because markets like ours, I think the customers still want diesel, but there's a lot of confusion on the policy side. So when you talk about making these investments, what role is diesel playing in that? Um, let me firstly focus on, on the world wealth uh, lineup. Uh, here I think diesel will play a decisive role in the future, um, as it does uh, today. Um, but we will see more alternatives on the market. Uh, it is not only diesel, you also will, also will see CNG, you will see the electrified vehicles, you will have mild hybrids, full hybrids, parallel, full hybrids, uh, plug-in hybrids, electrified vehicles. Uh, so um, this will be a, a huge range of, uh, of alternatives. And diesel will play a decisive role, but I think, uh, especially in the uh, lower segments, diesel will become simply too expensive mm. to be really competitive. And on the other hand, we are de developing intensively in new petrol engines. Yeah. And our current 1.0 three cylinder TSI engine is probably the most efficient engine on, on the market. Drives well too. Yeah, it drives yeah. really, really uh, <laughs> amazing, and uh, I think um, we will do uh, a lot of investments in the future to bring these petrol engines on the same level as diesel engines are today. So I think, especially in the entry segments, we will not see diesels anymore. In the uh, upper segments, let's say uh, an Octavia or Superb or a Kodiak, always will have a diesel in the in, in the next couple of years. But uh, by all means, uh, the way of individual mobility is uh, targeting in direction of electrification. And this we will see in India when the time is ready for it and the market is ready for it as well. So the product development that you talk about with the compact SUV, does it take into account electrification in the future and does it also take into account maybe not having a diesel at all? Yeah, we are ready for, for all solutions because we have all in our basket, already now. And uh, this is, from my point of view, a good prerequisite to now start the next chapter of success here in India. So is it fair to say that at this point there is no clear decision on whether you will go with one fuel type, two fuel types, or you don't know that yet? Uh, we are still... Um, for this product specifically, since yeah, you've announced we are, it. We are, we are still uh, under evaluation and uh, we are still in our time frame to be ready to decide, but uh, we have to take the decision, let's say, in the course of this year. I, I personally assume that it will be a petrol engine, because taking all items together, this will be the most competitive one in the market. You've also talked about high local content on this product. Um, I'm assuming the engine is a part of that. And so when you speak about the new TSI technology that we're seeing, does your investment plan that you're talking about today include productionizing that engine here as well? I own it. And uh, does that apply to other variations of it or is it strictly going to be the smaller engines only? Could be even more. All right, fair enough. You're not giving anything <laughs> away, but but it gives me a hint. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, for the, you know, for the two brands, we've seen obviously a certain sort of journey or a certain uh, a path that has been followed. Uh, but it was always, from our perspective, uh, seen as, you know, maybe one always getting a slight advantage over the other. Now that you set forward on this new strategy where, from a development point of view, yes, Skoda takes the lead. From a market point of view, what's going to be the role that it plays for so the customer? We, we, from, from, from a customer perspective, it will be clearly um, a presentation of two brands. So the Volkswagen brand will drive its dealer force and we are driving our dealer force. Um, the only thing what we are doing uh, together uh, is collaboration behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is uh, absolutely crucial on the one hand and also necessary. And on the other hand, it's um, probably the most successful approach ever. Well, we certainly hope so. And you know, I can tell you that there's been a lot of anticipation around this, about both these brands, you know, getting on with it and, and showing the Indian market what they represent uh, in other markets. You know, there, have been, there has been a lot of criticism in uh, all the press in the last couple of uh, months and, and years. And um, uh, we take that seriously. And uh, we know that we have to change a little bit, probably more than a little. And this is exactly what we are aiming for with India 2.0. The complete business scheme will be different 
and we have the best product, we have the best technology in place and uh, for a very upstream market, uh, I think uh, we are ready to take the chance. Now the investment figure that you're talking about, um, I'm, I'm assuming it's a, it's a sizable number in any case, about 1 billion euro is what we've been hearing. Yeah. Um, over what time frame does this sort of play out uh, and does the VW group make this investment or does Skoda make this investment? Um, Skoda is uh, doing the investment um, with, uh, together with the group um, and uh, it, will be, yeah, it will be spent, let's say, by end of 2020 when we come up with the first products and what will then happen, we will decide on the run. All right. And do you see the products hitting the market in 2020 or would it be over the next couple of I years? I think that uh, in the course of 2020 we will present the new products already. And like you said, it would be, so I'm assuming there will be a global premiere here. I hope so. All right. And, and again, the question then is, when you make that presentation, which brand does it first? Uh, both brands are doing it. Uh, both okay. Very well. yeah. All right. That's actually, again, encouraging to hear. Um, is there a role, maybe not in 2020, but in the, in the years to come as the market develops and certain segments in the market here in India start to um, you know, grow much faster at the top end of the market, as we've seen in China or other markets. Is there a role for Audi to play in any of this? Because when it comes to the platform, technologies, of course there are certain synergies there which that brand could really benefit from. Yeah, we are doing already a, a number of cars for Audi in our plant in our sure. product, yeah, with our parts and components scheme. And uh, yes, I think uh, as the market is growing and uh, the mid-sized level of, uh, of customers is growing tremendously, uh, I think uh, there is a good chance for this brand as well. All right, so one last area which I know we briefly talked about, which is of course electrification. I know there's a lot of confusion about policy and any kind of time frames here in India when it comes to that. Um, how do you view that confusion firstly? And how difficult is it therefore to make certain decisions because you obviously don't want to you know, be left behind? Uh, the problem with the future is always that it is uncertain. Uh, and uh, this is especially true when we talk about India. There yeah. have been such a <laughs> huge number of, of predictions uh, in, in the last couple of years what this market could look like in the future. But now I think there is a, a true pressure on it and a decisive one. And um, this market will have changed uh, in till the middle of the next decade. decade. And uh, this is the reason why I think it is the perfect time now to start off with a completely new approach. And um, we will see uh, this market turning from, electrify, from, from uh, internal combustion engine into more and more electrified vehicles, but also CNG from an Indian perspective is a very attractive alternative. And uh, so um, that there will be big changes and uh, the prerequisites, of course, have to be taken by the government and by the authorities itself. If we don't have the infrastructure for the new technology, uh, it does not make sense from a customer point of view. And we already said in our strategy that we don't want to be the one who is bringing all new technologies which are just currently available in the market at the first time. We listen to our customers and want only then bring new technologies when there is a real added value for our customers. When it is accessible, when the material costs are down to a recent number, when the infrastructure is prepared, that uh, refilling whatever energy you are taking yeah. is available spot on. Alright, so that's encouraging and so it's on your radar but yeah. I understand you can't put a time frame on it. Um, great to have you. And great to have uh, you know this plan being shared with us as well. We do wish you all the very best with it, and uh, can't wait, can't wait to see the products that come. Me too, by the way. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.